welcome you to Journey into Faith, brought to you every week by the Bible Speaks in Laconia, New Hampshire, USA. Wherever you are in this whole wide world, we want to lift you up with the Word of God and to challenge you as we challenge ourselves to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it is, we have come on to present a journey into faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we come to you and we're so glad we belong to Jesus. It's not just a song to us, it's a reality. We thank you that we have the promise of your return or we will go with you one day and enter into that place called heaven because of our faith in Jesus Christ. I ask you, Lord God, to bless each part of this service that together it might cause your name to be glorified and honored. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin tonight with a song from Eugenia Clark entitled, He Paid a Debt. Eugenia, that's a wonderful song. I'm going to read from the scriptures tonight from Psalm 77, verses 1 through 14. I see people are already standing in, uh, for the word of the Lord. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night I stretched out untiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. <coughs> you kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated, and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. 
the years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. As Pastor Horn comes forward to preach this message, God's seven wonders, just open our, height, our hearts and our ears to hear and put into practice what is being preached tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. How important it is to remember what God has done in the past. The psalmist is saying there, I'm miserable. Things aren't going well. What is his solution? To remember how God was faithful in the past and that God will be faithful to him again. He's going through a dry spell, but the dry spell is only for a season, and it is to test whether he's going to trust God in the dry spell or he's going to think God has abandoned him. We need to look at how God has been faithful all the days of our lives. When we go through the trials of life, we must face it. There are some wonderful days that God has shown his grace, his mercy, and his love to us. And if we don't really live in that, con that contemplation, then what will happen? We will get more and more and more dejected in our thought pattern. And God knows that the test is to prove us, not to destroy us. Tonight I want us to look at the seven wonders of God. There were seven wonders of the ancient world, and you can look in history and find those seven wonders that are mentioned there. There are seven wonders of this modern world, and we haven't got time to go into those. However, there are seven wonders that God has shown to us in Scripture. The first wonder, the wonder of God in showing his love to us. For God, God so loved you, so loved me, that he gave his only unique son, that whosoever believes on Jesus as their Savior should not perish but have everlasting life. Think of the wonder of God's love. Why should God love you? Why should God love me? We are twerps sometimes, and you know that. We are difficult people. We often will hear God and know he loves us, but do our own thing instead of live by every word that proceeds from God's holy word. Almighty God, who is from everlasting to everlasting, the creator of the whole universe, has chosen to love me. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel warm inside. The God who doesn't need to love me, he is complete in himself, has chosen to accept me in his son, Jesus Christ and love me with an everlasting love. God loves you, and he's interested in you. He's very interested in you. Even the hairs of your head, which are getting less for me, are counted. God knows when one of them falls out, or I find in my comb a hair that wasn't there before, or I find on the sink his that I know weren't there before, and I haven't even touched my head yet. And God counts it. He knows it. He is very interested in us, as if we were the only person that ever lived. 
It isn't that God loves everybody, and of course he does, but he loves us in particular. He loves us uniquely. He loves us intimately, and he wants what's best for our lives. And sometimes we're like the psalmist. We need a dry time to get on our knees and cry unto God and say, God, I have not given my life to you as much as I know you want me to. And I do that now. And then the trials and the tribulations begin to lessen because now God has accomplished getting us into his will and showing us what we did not believe before. God loves me with an everlasting love. He loves us, and he couldn't show it in any other way as extremely as he did as when he gave his son, whom he loves with a, an eternal love, he gave his son for our salvation. He loves you as much as he loves his son. Now understand that. God loves you as much as he loves himself. That's what the scriptures are revealing God was not willing that anyone should perish, so he gave them a way to eternal life. But the problem is many people don't accept that way. It's a sad thing when you read the word of God and hear the word saying hell has been enlarged because so many people reject Jesus Christ as their Savior when they hear the message of salvation. And then it must hurt God when his people who have accepted him choose to live half-heartedly for Jesus Christ and not surrender it all. I know that many people that sing that beautiful song, I surrender all, have not yet surrendered all. That's a very clear thing for in our day, the lukewarm church is that kind of a church. And I hope that you and I have done that. As far as I know, I have. But God will show me if I have not. Because God loves me so much, he's going to continue to mature me. I'm still on my way to maturity. It's like that person that said, there's a sign on my back, so don't judge me. It's called under construction. God is continuing to make me more like his son, but it's with my permission. God will not do that unless I want him to do that. Loneliness is one of the greatest problems in our time that people face. We can be in a crowd. We can be in a party. We can be in a great auditorium filled with people and suddenly we feel lonely. We're not lonely for people. People say, I, I need more people around me. I need more friends. You can be in the midst of tons of people and yet that loneliness begins to invade. It's a loneliness for God. It's a loneliness for a relationship with God that goes beyond most Christians' relationship with God. Do you know that that loneliness for God can only be quenched by getting and spending time with God? That's what prayer is all about, spending time with God. That's what Bible study on your own is all about, devotional time. That's what it's all about, to get alone with God. And let God speak to you personally. We're made in the image of God. God made us for fellowship. And we're not content until we have that fellowship that God wants us to experience. That fellowship had been broken by sin. Sin in our life often will break that fellowship. We are sinners that are saved by the grace of God, but that doesn't mean we don't sin. That means we don't want to sin and we feel guilty when we do. But every time I sin and I don't confess it alone to God, he's the one that I've offended when I do something contrary to his word, when I don't follow 
the revelation of God to me in his word. When I say that is for somebody else, not for me, and I wish they were here, and yet God has brought me here, and therefore he's saying these things to me, not to them. So when I don't respond to God's word to me, that is sin and the fellowship that I need with God daily, moment by moment, is broken. It's broken. We don't find fulfillment or purpose or meaning in life without that fellowship with God. Every day you ought to have a time when you can fellowship alone with God. It's wonderful to fellowship with others, and I do that with my wife in my home, but there are times when I must fellowship alone with God, and God speaks to me personally. That is why Christ came to bring us to God so that we could have that fellowship that was broken when Adam and Eve sinned, and it was passed on to us. So the first wonder is simply this, God loves me. And he loves me, and he will never stop loving me. He is an eternal God that loves eternally. The second wonder is this, the wonder of his coming to live among us. Can you imagine God, who is absolutely holy, absolutely everywhere present, divine in every sense, entered into a human being that was specially prepared through the Virgin Mary as he, she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. And that vessel had God living within it. Can you imagine Mary holding God in her hands? For she was told that which was born of her would be from the Holy Spirit of God and would be called the Son of God because he was the Son of God. She held God in her very hands when she held that baby Jesus. We carry God inside of us today because Jesus Christ sent the third part of the Trinity into us when he said, you receive me, now receive the Holy Spirit of God. God lives within me, the God of creation, the God of love, and I can grieve that God because that God is a God that cares about how I live and how I think and what I do in my life. God became man. He became flesh so that he could experience the temptations and the trials that I experience in this lifetime. He was tempted in all points, even as we are tempted. No one can say God doesn't understand because God had every temptation in the flesh that mankind would ever experience. But he didn't give in to those temptations. Temptation is not sin, Giving in to them is sin, and Jesus never sinned. God was in Christ. When I see the love of God feeding 5,000 at one time and 4,000 at another time, I see the love of God taking care of people. When I see him bringing to life that which person was dead, I see the love of God showing I can do the impossible because you need to know that. You need to know that in your life I can do the impossible. I can heal the diseases. I can raise the dead. I can cause the blind to see. I can do anything, and it's my reasonable right to do it. I am God, and I love you, and in good cases, when it's necessary, when it is for the will and the glory of God, I will reverse the disease. I will take it away as a person that had four-stage cancer in our ministry was healed recently from that cancer. As Tanya 
who was led a different way, but God healed her through an operation on her foot. Or somebody else that had some problem, physical problem, and God answered prayer. It was all because God loves us and God hears us and God will always do what's best for us. When I see Jesus rebuking the hypocrisy of his day and the false teachers of his day, I think God cares about what I listen to. There are many false teachers on the, wor on the uh, satellites and on the uh, television sets. There are many people that embrace another gospel. You can't find it in the Bible. It's their version of God's gospel. And we are told that they should be castrated by Paul if they preach any other gospel than the gospel of Jesus Christ. He had no tolerance for people that would lead God's people astray, that would lead God's people to not believe God would take care of them. There is a third wonder, the wonder of the cross. We can never understand the depths of God's love until we understand what happened when Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? as he cried from the cross, and God the Father turned his back on his son because his son became our sin as he paid for it on that cross. What happened in that moment? The lightning that flashed, the thunder that roared, and the darkness that settled on the earth revealed that God accepted what the son was doing and he turned his back on sin, and the Son became sin for us. Scripture says the Lord hath laid on Jesus Christ the iniquity or the sins of us all. And it also says who in his own self bear our sins in his own body on that tree. He did that because he loves me. He did that because he cares about me. Jesus Christ was dying on that cross, not for himself, but for you and for me. He wasn't just dying a physical death. He was dying a spiritual death to his father. No longer was that fellowship there that God had had from the very beginning. There had never been a separation of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but now it came as the Son took my place. Oh, my friends, how he loves us, how he loves us, and he showed it on that cruel cross. Scripture says he became sin for us. He became guilty of adultery, murder, lust, greed, pride, in everything you can think of. He did that for you. He did that for me. He had never known sin. Now he was filled with it. You know, sometimes when I was a youngster, I got into the mud and got real dirty. I was filled with dirt, but thank God I knew a place I could get it washed off. And Jesus can wash you as clean as if you never sinned by receiving him as your Savior. The word of God makes it very clear then. Jesus took it all, and all to him I owe. The fourth wonder is the wonder of conversion. Except you be converted and become as a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of of God. I had to come as a little child to Jesus, not because I was young, because an adult has to come as a young child too, simply by faith that when I came and I asked Jesus to cleanse me of my sin by receiving him as my Savior, he did that for all eternity. Except you be converted, says the word of God, 
The word converted simply means transformed by the word of God. Unless you be converted, you will no wise enter the kingdom of God. And I wanted to enter the kingdom of God, so I let him convert me. Then the fifth wonder is the gift of peace and joy that Christ gives to the person who receives him as their Savior. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. I will give you my joy if you will receive my gift of salvation. The sixth wonder is God's plan for the future. God has a plan for each one of us. It says, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God has an eternal plan for you. This is not all there is to life. It is only a blink of time. Eternity is looking forward to seeing you and greeting you one day. Then the seventh wonder is your commitment to Jesus Christ. When you commit your life to Jesus Christ and you truly commit your life to Jesus Christ, he takes over and you're being led by the Spirit of God. And if you're truly committed, you will not resist that directing of the Holy Spirit. You will submit to it. The seven wonders of God Almighty, you've heard them. Have they changed you? Let's pray. Father, we come to you and we thank you that these seven wonders are reality. They're more important than the ancient wonders or the modern wonders. They're the wonders of God. And Lord, it's taught by your love. So Lord, if there's anyone listening to me by way of the public access TVs or the internet or the DVDs we put out, and they have never received you as their Savior, I pray that they will make that commitment right now and receive Jesus Christ into their life. Ask him to come in and save their souls, and then they will experience all these wonderful wonders of God and be transformed forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have received Christ as your Savior, as we say every week, please let us know. You can let us know by way of the internet at ourhornet2 at metricast.net or write to us at The Bible Speaks in Laconia, 40 Belvedere Street, Lakeport, New Hampshire, Zip code 03246. Until next week, God bless you and continue to journey into faith.